Hi guys, I'm Dawson. This is A Closer Look. Welcome to episode one. Uh, I am here today in a temperate deciduous forest that kind of abuts up to a marsh, an estuary. Um, so it's early May here in Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and there's not much life going on, you would think. If you look around, everything's still no leaves, gray, a little tiny bit of pop of green here and there. I'm gonna go around, we're gonna look. Uh, there's plenty of insect life that's kind of just emerging from its winter slumbers. Uh, so we're gonna take a look around, see what we can find. One of the most important things about doing macro photography and just looking for little things. You need to slow down. Um, while you look here, there's so many options for normal photography, right? But you can take one tree, and if you start at the bottom and you work your way up, you could spend hours just on one tree. Um, which is what we're gonna do once we find the tree that I found yesterday. Um, I think I remember where it is. And uh, yeah. So as you can see, it's a little windy here. When I was holding that flower, um, just the wind is so much that a little breeze can make blur. Um, it's one of the things you have to combat when you're doing macro photography. Um, is a motion blur um, usually not that bad when you're using a speed light because you can stop the action with the light itself um, but your depth of field the part that's in focus is so small that the wind blowing the flower in this case um, will cause you to miss the shot um, so while i'm walking i'm usually just always looking for any movement in the trees uh, in the leaves um, listening for any buzzing of wings, anything that will uh, give me the clue that there's something here. Uh, a lot of times you'll see spider webs just shining in the sun. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I find a spider over here, and I'm going to zoom in so you can see a technique of focusing where you leave your lens at your closest focus distance, and because of that shallow depth of field, it's really hard to get something in focus. Um, so we're going to zoom in, and you can see me rocking back and forth. Um, so what I'm doing, I'm trying to focus before, after, and hopefully in between and actually get the subject in focus. You'll see I take a lot of photos, and when you're using this method or any macro photography really out in the field, you end up taking a bunch of photos. Most of them will look like this. Um, so it's not unheard of to take you know, 
hundreds of photos uh, during a day or an outing. And again, so at least it's in the center. I'm getting closer. Um, yeah, so you just take, 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 and spray and pray. Uh, so it's not the best photo, but it is somewhat in focus here. And that was just this little guy. All right, so I'm speed up the video and uh, mosey my way down the path. So I finally found what I was looking for. Um, hi, buddy. Sorry, there's a little bug. Um, and after looking for like 45 minutes, it was literally 50 feet from the car. I didn't remember it being this close. Um, and best delayed plans always go uh, to waste or whatever that is, they say. Um, yesterday, this little spot um, was teeming with life. Uh, we had isopods, we had beetles, um, there were insect larvae, there were nematode worms. Um, so what I'm gonna do, there's not much in it right now. I do see some mosquito larvae. Um, I think there's an isopod that I can see. Um, so it's a little later today. Uh, the sun is kind of coming in and actually illuminating the hole. Yesterday it was in darkness. Um, there was also about another inch of water in here. Uh, on the top of the surface, let me actually show you what I'm talking about. So it's a hole in a tree. Apparently there's an entire, um, there's an entire study of tree hole environments. Uh, let's see if we can. So this here is just a whole cavity in a tree that had filled up with rainwater. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see from that side. I'm going to try and get some video on hand here. Let's... All right, so after all of that, lugging out all of this gear, the only thing that actually worked was my phone. So I'm going to go ahead and put some video in here. We've got... So I was so excited when I found this little spot and there was so much diversity within just you know a few ounces of water um, so looking here the little guys that are squiggling all around in like that s motion those are the nematode worms um, they only have one layer of muscle which is longitudinal muscle so they can only squiggle in that s shape um, that you see that guy doing up in the top um, they can also coil up and here on the right, you can see some isopods. We'll talk about them in a second. But the stuff floating on the surface of the water, those there's some debris there, but there's also some exoskeletons from where some larval species of insects have come to the surface, molted, and flown away. So, so on the right, we see some isopods that are hanging out there. Uh, we'll see a little better picture of them in a bit. Um, they're actually terrestrial crustaceans, uh, so closely related to crabs and lobsters and shrimp. And more of the squiggly guys because I think they're cute. And back to the isopods. Uh, we have these guys hanging out on the wall. I think they come up here for a drink. Yesterday when I was looking, the entire wall was just solid gray because there were so many. Here we looks like there's an adult and two juveniles. Yeah, so there are nematodes. They're the little guys that squiggle like this through the water. Uh, I'm not sure if these are actually, the, I don't know what species they are um, or um, what their life cycle is, though some are parasitic and some are free living. Uh, if this is a free living, it probably lives its entire life within this hole. Um, there are mosquito larvae in there. 
Sorry, there's more isopods. I wasn't sure if it was a spider or not. Um, so yeah, there's about five different things growing in there as well as bacteria, um, fungus, and there's algae actually growing in there, which is pretty cool considering we're in the middle of the forest. Not the middle, because as you can hear, there's a really loud truck going by. Um, so yeah, this is what we have. I'm gonna go ahead and, and collect some samples of water from this hole. Um, and then I'm probably going to put all my gear in the car and just come out with my camera. Because normally when I'm out taking pictures, I don't have four bags with me, um, three tripods and all that good stuff. Um, so I'll edit this together and post it up. We'll throw in some photos of what we found. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Like. This, to me, is fun. Um, you know, we're all in corona lockdown, and I'm out in the middle of the woods by myself. I'm isolating. There is definitely social distance here. Um, yeah. All right. Until next time. Bye, guys.